Hey everybody, this video is going to cover the 50 point sequences quiz that we took about two weeks ago. I'm just going to go over the answers pretty quickly and if you have any additional questions, please come into class to uh, ask me for help before or after school. Alright, question one. At 8 a.m. there are 10 people studying in the library and every half hour, six new people enter the library to study. For which sequence does the nth term represent the number of people studying in the library n hours after 8 a.m.? So let's break this problem down and just understand what's going on here. Your first term in the sequence is going to be 10. And it tells you that at the beginning of the problem. It says at 8 a.m. there are 10 people studying in the library. So you know that's your first term. Your second term is going to have to be thought about a little bit. Uh, notice that it says, oops, it's 22, but here's why. Uh, notice that it says every half hour, six new people enter the library. A half hour is 30 minutes. If you notice at the end of the problem, it says N is representing the hours after 8 a.m. So when N is 2, and you're calculating your second term, that's asking you how many more people are going to be in the library after two hours. Well, think about how many people are going to show up each and every hour. If six people show up every half hour, then that means an increase of 12 people are going to show up every hour. So that's the key part to understanding this problem. Six people for every half hour, 12 people for every hour that happens. So, uh, your second term of the sequence, when you add 12 to 10, you would get 22. And when you add 12 to 22, you would get 34. So that's why the answer choice is, uh, is choice D. Uh, number two, the, uh, what is the explicit rule of the arithmetic sequence represented in the table? The arithmetic uh, explicit rule formula has been listed right here, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. You simply need to plug in the correct variables where they need to go, and uh, a sub 1, your first term, that is 11. You can see that right in the table where n equals 1, f of n equals 11. And then the difference, uh, as you go from 11 to 7, you are taking away 4. From 7 to 3, you're taking away 4. So that's why the value for D, the common difference, is subtracting by 4. And then the n minus 1 part always stays the same. Choice A is representing that function. Number three, write a recursive formula for the sequence 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. The recursive sequence formula is right here, a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus d, your common difference. So again, keep in mind, a sub n minus 1, that idea represents your previous term. So what's happening as the pattern in the sequence well, it looks like every time we are getting a new, new term, we're adding 5 to it. So our common difference is adding 5. You, you can immediately see that answer choice C is not going to be correct. Uh, the way you would just simply answer this is just take note of the fact that the first term in the sequence is 10. So that eliminates choice uh, B because it says a sub 1 is 5. And then simply notice, uh, it, the formula says a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus D. And right there it says a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 5. Uh, number four, little tricky of a problem, but uh, here's the basic explanation of it. You're writing the first seven terms of the sequence defined by the recursive function below. They tell you the first two terms, zero and one. And then it says f of n equals two times f of n minus one. So when we're trying to find f of three, the third term, we're simply going to plug in two times f of n minus 1, so 3 minus 1, which is 2, f of 2, the, the second term, and then we are adding f of n minus 2, so 3 minus 2 is 1. f of 2 is 1, and f of 1 is 0. This function is asking you to just simply take 2 times the previous term, and then add two previous terms ago to that result. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 0 is 0. And then switch out the next two terms. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. Plug in 2 and 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12. And then plug in 12 and 5, 2 times 12 is 24, and 24 plus 5 is 29. And then plug in your last two numbers and you get your last term, which is 70.
But uh, to be uh, to be perfectly frank with you guys, this question was not counted against you or for you on this quiz. It was kind of thrown in there just to be an additional challenge question. All right, last one, number five. It says, uh, oops, it says a recursive definition of an arithmetic sequence is shown below. A sub 1 equals 7, and A sub n equals A sub n minus 1 plus 3. Which of the following expressions represents the nth term of the sequence? Now, it's very tempting to pick choice A because it says n plus 3, and you have a plus 3 right there, but that is not the correct answer. Here's an explanation of what's going on here. Your first term in the sequence is 7, so when n equals 1, your answer is 7. When you make the value of n 1, as you can see right there, the result you get is 7. So when you add 3, because that's what the common difference is, when n equals 2, your second term, you're adding 3 to 7, and you get 10. And then the third term would be 13, and so on and so forth. It's asking you for an expression that represents the nth 